We come across a lot of relationships in physics where one variable is proportional to another variable raised to a power. So we've got some examples here of formulas that you ought to have come across in the A-level course. So although all those equations we've just seen were different, they are all of the same common format. They all have one variable is proportional to another variable raised to a power. And this is a really common, really important form of equation that crops up all over the place in physics. When we do an experiment, we usually give a series of values to one variable, in this case A, and then we measure the resulting values of another variable, in this case B. Obviously, if this was a real experiment, A and B would probably have units. And when we've got the table of results, what we try to do is to find a relationship between A and B. Sometimes it might be really easy to spot the relationship. For instance, if A and B are directly proportional, we can usually tell by looking at the results that a graph of B against A would be a straight line. But in other cases, the relationship might be more complicated. And the two variables probably wouldn't give a straight line if you plotted them directly. So we've got to try and think what we do plot. And when we think about what the relationship between A and B might be, it's always worth considering that is it of the form that we've been looking at? Is it of the form B is proportional to A to the N? There's no reason why it should be, but a lot of formulas are of that form, so it's always worth considering that it might be like that. Especially if you're in an exam question that tells you it might be like that. Now one way to find out whether that's the relationship is to guess a value of N, work out A to the N and plot a graph of B against A to the N. And if you've struck lucky, you get a straight line and you know the, what the relationship is. If you don't get a straight line, you've got to guess another value of n. Go through the process again, plot a graph and try to get a straight line, and so on and so forth. So you could be there forever trying to guess the right value of n. And it may be that there isn't a the right value of n anyway, because the relationship doesn't have to be of that form. So what we could do with is a much quicker, more efficient method of finding out whether or not a relationship is like that. And we can do this using logarithms. Before we start using logs, it's useful to remind ourselves what they are. We should know you can write a number as another number to a power. So, to use easy examples, the number 100 could be written as, the, as 10 to the power of 2. And the number 1000 could be written as 10 to the power of 3. Unless you're a real sort of weirdo geek, you won't know this without using your calculator to check. But the number that's 10 to the power of 2.699 is 500. And we can do this for any number, at least any positive number. So the number that we are trying to find, it's 10, which is the base, raised to a certain power. So we could say that 2 is the power you use with 10 to get 100. 3 is the power you use with 10 to get 1000. 2.699 is the power that you use with 10 to get 500. And it's a real mouthful to have to say the power you use with 10 to get. So that's why we just have a name for it. Instead of calling 2 the power you have to use with 10 to get 100, we call it the log. Strictly speaking, the log to base 10 of 100. We call, that's what we call 2. So 2.699 is the power you've got to use with 10 to get 500. So another way of putting it, log to base 10 of 500. What's the power? It's 2.699. And 3 is the power you use with 10 to get 1,000. So now there's the log to base 10 of 1,000 is equal to 3. There are also a couple of laws of logarithms which we're going to be using. And it's easy to illustrate if we do an example. So if I take 10 to the power 2 and I multiply it by 10 to the power 3, then the answer is, it's 100 times 1,000, it's 100,000, which is 10 to the power 5. So when we've got numbers written as powers, and we multiply those numbers together, then what we do is we add together the powers. So that's a law that's going to be important to us in using logarithms. And then the other law we need to use is imagine something like 10 to the power 3. If we square that, that's 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 3, which is 10 to the power 6. 
So when you've got a power that's raised to a power, you multiply together the two powers. Similarly, if I had something like 10 to the power 4, and that was to be cubed, I would have 10 to the power 4 times 10 to the power 4 times 10 to the power 4, so I've got three lots of 4 which give me 10 to the power 12. So, so again, a power raised to a power, you multiply together the two powers. So those are the rules we're going to be using when we're trying to use logarithms.